Hello to all students. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss digestion in fish. As you know that there are so many different species of fish found in water. And as you know that there are two types of water, salt water, which are oceans and seas and fresh water, which is present on land in the form of rivers, lakes, etc. So there are so many different types of species living in different types of water and each type of fish has a little bit different type of digestive system according to their habitat and according to their uh, water availability. There are so many different types of fish like cyclostomata, cartilaginous fish, contrichthys and uh, bony fishes like uh, osteichthys. So each type of uh, fish has different type of digestive system. So first of all, we are going to discuss the digestive system of a fish, of a generalized fish. So I have taken a diagram of a generalized fish and shown a digestive system, which is also known as gut or alimentary canal. Gut or alimentary canal can be divided into three parts, foregut, midgut and hindgut. The length of the gut varies according to the type of the fish. Anyhow, alimentary canal is composed of a tube-like structure which opens from, which starts from mouth and ends at anus. Their system is just like human beings, animals and birds, but it is little bit different from other animals. The first of all, mouth leads into oral cavity. Some fish contain teeth and tongue, while other fish, they lack teeth and tongue depending upon the species. In the oral cavity which leads into pharynx and pharynx leads into esophagus. Esophagus leads into a sac like structure which is J shaped stomach. Stomach leads into small intestine and small intestine contain several ducts coming from different glands like liver, pancreas and pyloric cecae. Food is digested in the small intestine and then this small intestine leads into large intestine and which leads into rectum and undigested food is released from the body through anus. Now we are going to discuss each part in detail. First of all, we are going to describe feeding habits. As I mentioned earlier, there are different types of different species of fishes which takes food in different forms. So if we look at the feeding habits, some fish are plankton feeders, zooplankton. Zooplankton are floating animals, small animals, microscopic animals which live in water and float on the surface or in the middle layer of the water. These fishes like Catla, they feed on these kind of animals, these kind of creatures, these kind of foods. Some fishes are phytoplankton feeder, phytoplankton feeder also microscopic algae which drifts in the water. These type of planktons are usually belongs to algae. So silver carp is an example of phytoplankton feeder. Some fish are herbivorous mean they eat algae and sea grasses like kelps etc. Example is grass carp. Some fish are omnivorous in they can eat both plants and animals. Rahu is an example of omnivorous fish. Some fish are detritivorous. It means that they eat and consume detritus of animal of dead animals and plants. Usually detritus is found at the bottom of the sea and ocean or in the water. And so these fish usually live at the bottom of the water example is rigol so these fishes different types of fishes they consume different types of food depending upon their environment now we are going to move towards the mouth so food is taken inside the alimentary canal with help of mouth and the first part is teeth the teeth is known as dentition they have fish have different adaptation according to their feeding habitat. 
For example, carnivorous fish which eat flesh or and they are predatory and they eat and uh, other fish attack on other fish their teeth are strong and pointed which can easily kill or grasp other smaller fishes and their teeth can break fish into tiny pieces herbivorous fish which eats usually algae seaweed and plants they usually do not have teeth while omnivorous fish which can eat both flesh and plants they have very fine teeth only to grasp their prey or grasp their food alongside the teeth some fish also have tongue tongue is usually non muscular and only helps in the grasping of the food after that mouth leads into oral cavity and oral cavity leads into pharynx pharynx usually has gill rakers gill rakers are filamentous structure which are associated with gills which are used for respiration but gill rakers are used for filtering and gathering of food particles which are coming along the water according to different species gill rakers are of different types for example carnivorous fish which eat flesh they have long hard and teeth like gill rakers omnivorous fish usually have short and stumpy gill rakers while herbivorous fish usually have broad sieve like gill rakers so gill rakers collect and filter food which is present alongside the water water is going to be moved outside of the body through gills into the uh, external environment but the food particles collected by the gill rakers are going to be transported into esophagus which is a small tube like structure muscular st structure which leads into stomach after the food reaches into the stomach stomach is j shaped structure which is muscular and uh, this stomach also has different adaptation some fish they have stomach while other fish they do not have stomach the fish usually have stomach and uh, do not have stomach they usually have a sac like structure of uh, extension of small intestine if we look at the adaptation of stomach such fish which have stomach are examples are tilapia and catfish while such fish which usually do not have stomach or without stomach and uh, they are cyprinids like carps such fish which have uh, stomach these stomach are fully functional and they produce hcl and pepsinogen protein digesting enzyme as well as the stomach is used to store a large amount of foods after partly digesting the food food is sent into a uh, small intestine chunk by chunk which is also known as bolus or chyme here the complete digestion of food takes place with the help of certain enzymes first of all liver liver is uh, a gland which produces bile which emulsifies fats and helps in the digestion of lipids bile is released into small intestine with the help of bile duct the other organ is pancreas which produce pancreatic juice which contain lipases proteases and amylase enzyme which digest different food particles carbohydrates lipids and proteins present inside the food there are also two extensions which are known as pyloric cecae their function is still debatable but most of the scientists they believe that pyloric cecae have enzymatic role they produce certain enzyme which helps in the digestion of the food particles some fish also have gall bladder which stores bile and uh, it is released drop by drop into small intestine the lumen of small intestine final digestion takes place inside the small intestine and food is completely digested over here after that absorption of food takes place absorb after absorption of foods into into the blood the remaining food particles which are undigested can be stored inside the rectum the last part of the small intestine and after that undigested material of the food can be eliminated from the body through ns which are known as feces so in this way uh, 
The digestive system of fish is just like the digestive system of other animals with little bit modification but due to the vast variety of species of the fishes present inside of the water every species of water has little bit adaptation uh, different from other type of fish or species of the fish so that's all for today i hope it makes sense and i'll see you in the next lecture until then bye